When people think about Jewish heroes, they tend to think about thousands of years ago, the biblical stories that they learned as a child. But the truth is, there have been many, many heroes in the modern state of Israel. One of them, I want to tell you his story. Shalom, my friends. This is the Kiva Gersh with Israel in 5, where we give you everything Israel in 5 minutes. Please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or want to keep the conversation going, please do so below in the comments. Roi Klein. It's a name that brings up the value and the display of heroism in modern Israel today. Some years ago, a study, a survey was done throughout Israel in all kinds of different high schools, secular, religious, of all kinds, of all different backgrounds. And they were asked in the survey, one of the questions they were asked is, who is your hero? Who is your modern day hero? Across the board, most Israeli kids said, well, we Klein. Who is Roe Klein and why has he become such a hero to so many Israeli youth today? Roe Klein was born in a city just north of Tel Aviv called Ranana. He lived a modern Orthodox life where he went to school, where he learned Torah studies, secular studies. They say everything he touched turned to gold. He was an amazing student, super, super smart, great at chess. Really anything he did was, was successful. And when he went to the army, it was no different. He rose through the ranks and he did all kinds of tremendous things to help out his people. He felt energized specifically by a gap year that he did between high school and going to the army to really stand up for his people and to give his all and to give his everything on behalf of his country, his land, his people and his people's history. So when it came time for the second Lebanon war in 2006, which was against the Hezbollah terrorist organization, he rose once again to the challenge. He was already a high-ranking officer in his unit, and he led a group of soldiers in southern Lebanon. It was a very, very intense war, lasting just over a month, but the fighting was very, very fierce. A lot of guerrilla-style warfare during the Second Lebanon War. And unfortunately, Roy Klein, who was leading his troops, found themselves, found himself along with his troops, in the worst situation possible. They were in an area that was enclosed on uh, multiple sides and over a wall, a Hezbollah terrorist threw a grenade. Now a grenade doesn't take very long for it to explode. And of course, well, we kind of knew that. What did he do as soon as he saw that grenade on the floor with his soldiers all standing around without giving it a split second thought? What did he do? He jumped on the grenade. He jumped on the grenade, and of course, a split second later, the grenade went off in his body, absorbed the entire explosion. He was intensely injured. He was not yet killed. And with the last life in him, he did a few very, very powerful things. First of all, he said the Shema. Shema Yisrael Hashem Adokin Hashem Echad, which is the most important of all the Jewish prayers. And it's a tradition going back almost 2,000 years ago that when a Jew finds him or herself in a situation where he or she thinks that this is it, that they're about to leave this world, they say the Shema, which declares the oneness of God, belief in God and the oneness of God as their last act in this world, the powerful act of faith. And that's exactly what Roe Klein did in front of his surviving soldiers. But not only that, with the last few bits of energy in his life, he got on his radio and he reported his death. He reported his death and he handed over his radio to the second in command, basically telling him, this is where my story ends. I'm going to die right now. I'm going to die right here. You take over, right? Take care of the fellow troops, of your fellow troops. It's a tremendous, tremendous act of strength, both spiritual and physical to use his last physical strength to say the Shema, this powerful, powerful prayer, and make this incredibly strong spiritual statement before he left the world, at the same time to pass on leadership, right, to, uh, as his final teaching to his fellow soldiers, to the soldiers who were under his command, right, of what a true leader is all about. A true leader is willing to, to risk his life, to give his life for the soldiers under his command. And a true leader will always make sure that there's somebody there in a leadership position if he can't be himself. And this is how Roe Klein, 31 years old, married with two young kids. This is how he left the world. Right away, the story flew all over the Israeli news. 
and became a, a story of, of great heroism in the modern state of Israel. And that's why even years later, when high school students around the country are asked, of all different backgrounds, religious, secular, and all the different versions and variations of, of Israeli high school students, when they're asked, who is your hero? Are there heroes today? And who is your hero? They say across the board of OE Klein, they look at him as someone who exemplify what it means to be a leader, a Jewish leader, a modern Israeli warrior and leader, right? willing to give up his entire life right? for the sake of his people, his nation, and the soldiers that he's responsible for. And for that, we thank Roe Klein.